Welcome to our backyard. This is the Backyard Philosophy Podcast. We are two friends having a discussion after everyone else has passed out or gone to bed. Grab a drink and listen as we discuss everything from automation, space exploration, and why the meaning of life is 42. Mike, would you eat a person? I would not eat a person, but luckily I'm drinking Jack, so I don't have to think about that. What about you, Nick? Would you eat a person, and what are you drinking? I am drinking Rogue Dead Guy Ale for... Ha! One, because I like the beer, and two, because we're talking a lot about dead people, or will. Yeah, it's scenario-based, but after learning what I know now, that might depend, so let's... uh. Let's talk about cannibalism. I, I just got to say, Nick, I love how we opened with a pun, and you absolutely endure and love puns, don't you, Nick? I didn't even think about it. I fucked up. Yeah. Well, we can't get any worse than this. <laughs> well, if we start eating humans, it might have been pretty bad. Yeah, that's true. Better than the Spanish Inquisition, though. <laughs> so, cannibals. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. This episode, we'll be talking about the taboo culture of cannibals, which surprisingly is deeply woven within all of our cultures, all of our ancestry, and still has interesting effects even to this day. I think a great place to start is, well, ladies and gentlemen, we are all descendants of cannibals. You're like, what? My my grandfather wasn't a serial killer. My great-great-grandfather didn't eat anybody. No, we gotta go way back in time for this one. So, in the early days of human history, we had other humanoids, like Neanderthals, and we didn't just kill them, bred with them, we even ate them. I mean, food's kind of scarce, mammoths are kind of disappearing, you're hungry, you got this thing, it's fleshy, it's kind of appetizing. So that's right, we all come from cannibals in one form or another, and... We didn't lose that ancient tradition of eating people. All throughout time, some form, whether it be religious, whether it be survival, whether it be society acceptable, we would eat human beings. Fast forward a little bit to the Aztecs' time, where we'd have human sacrifice, and for not just the Aztec, but many cultures, eating your victim, your prisoner, your sacrifice would gain their quote-unquote abilities if you ate their legs if they were a fast runner you would get their speed if you ate their heart of a warrior you'd get their heart as a warrior and that spiritualism is deeply deeply tied with cannibalism and nick wouldn't you agree that it's quite common when researching this that throughout many different cultures many different forms it is ingrained into human history yeah there's so many examples of cannibalism from as far as we can go back to not that long ago, even to like in the last 10 years. Yeah, least. it's really recent, but sticking with the past for a little bit longer, warfare cannibalism is when it's called, when there's, which I didn't know until researching this, there are different layers of cannibalism, different names, different terminology. Warfare cannibalism is when you're consuming your enemy. So if you got into a fight, the guy was really good, you ate his heart. You got his powers, so to speak. That's kind of way for cannibalism. And another thing that was really huge, which is still practiced, I think, to this day in in New Guinea and India, I could be mistaken if it's still practiced today, is kind of a mortuary cannibalism. So final rites. It is surprising how many cultures have their religious ties of their death to cannibalism. So when you die, you get eaten. Like, that's your final wish is your family, your tribe eats you. And, Nick, I got to say, if I die, please, please don't eat me. Just just let me rot or burn me. Yeah, that's not really going to be an issue because I don't actually want to eat you. And for that matter, pretty much most Americans. Ouch. Just, uh, Just throwing me underneath the bus of not even the cannibals want me. But I wouldn't eat you. I wouldn't eat me either. I don't know. We put some hot sauce in you, throw you on the barbecue, slow cook you. You try it with ketchup? 
I bet you'd like it with ketchup. I might be from the Midwest. I don't want everything with ketchup or ranch. Well, you definitely like it with ranch. Ranch makes everything great. (laughs) Moving on into history, it just keeps going on and branching off. Like you have endocannibalism, so eating someone in your own group for the benefit of the tribe. Exocannibalism, so think about the cannibals who hunt other people just to eat them. That's kind of exocannibalism. Survival cannibalism, which we'll talk about later in the podcast, where you're in a dire situation and you need to eat. But moving from ancient tribes of the Aztecs a little bit forward, it still was practiced for a very long time. During the Middle Ages, 1400s, all the way up to like the 1700s, it was popular in Europe to eat people. There were people doing these, I believe it was called mama, mama cannibalism, something like that. I think it was mummy, mummy. Oh man, now I can't <laughs> say it. Mumiary? I think it's like mumiary or mummyary. God, I said this word before, like yesterday, and you, you came and <laughs> fucked it up. And now I can't I'm really say it good at doing that, aren't I? <laughs> but and all throughout Europe, they were using mummified humans as a cure-all. You have a bruise, throw some mummy on that. You have dysentery, eat some mummy jerky. So much so where they kind of stole a lot of mummies from Egypt and that region. And, well, when there's high demand, you kind of want to fill it. So people were faking mummies by using, by digging up other graves and quote unquote mummifying them, which was just kind of disgusting wrapping them up. But it was very common to use human flesh as a cure all in Europe for the longest time. Would you say so, Nick? Yeah, that was, like you said, not uncommon. And it was almost like a, not everyone can afford the, the ground up mummy. So it's kind of like a status thing, too. It's weird, too, because it wasn't just a medicine thing. I believe it was Japan or China at the same time this region. A child of a would offer their flesh, usually from the thigh or a finger, to their parent who was sick or deadly, kind of like a... I was was kind of confused on the context of it, whether it was for religious purposes or actual medicinal but giving your flesh for cure, giving your flesh to eat, giving your flesh up for consumption is in every culture. Like just just the first 10 minutes of recording this podcast, we're talking about Aztecs, Neanderthals, Europeans, Japanese. It's all across the board. Every culture has some ties to cannibalism, which is absolutely insane. Yeah, and I, I do you want to go back a little bit. If you're ever wondering why uh, in Europe they have a bunch of sarcophaguses with no mummies inside now you know the british museum was just filled with empty sarcophagus what happened to all these nothing <laughs> uh we don't know <laughs> royal, fa- royal family shrugs but sticking with europe in that same time period the dutch sorry dutch you've been good to us but gotta spit the facts and no i if there's two people i hate in this people. world It's people who are intolerant of other people's cultures and the Dutch. It's amazing how much Austin Powers comes up in our podcasts. Uh, But the Dutch had a riot uh, during 1672 against, I guess you could say, their prime minister. It was pretty much two brothers who kind of capitalized and ruled the country. But the mob rose up, hunted down one of their prime ministers, Tore them to bits, and many accounts have them eating them. So out of a act of defiance, a act of humiliation against their enemy, they ate the remains of their enemy, which is so tribal. And I imagine we're not going to really touch on this, so I won't bring this up now. Humans aren't the only ones who do cannibalism. It's quite common in a lot of insects, apes, fish. It's in many different species, birds. It's all over the board. Uh, Mammals, too. We got polar bears, lions. It's actually almost, it seems like more common to eat your own than not eat your own. Yeah, that's that's a scary thought because, I, I mean, cannibalism is so taboo in modern culture. I, I just always assume that it was always like that because it seems so weird to eat another human being. Like, I think it's very, I thought it was very common for a species not to eat their own species because of like, 
mad cow disease, which we'll probably talk about later with New Guinea of the diseases you get from eating human flesh. If you're a human, for all you aliens out there, eat away. There's too many of us. But Nick, fast forwarding a little bit, I mean, royal family, like you mentioned, was eating human flesh in what, the 1700s or something like that? Yes, the 17th century. But I want to point out chimpanzees will um, eat their own. They'll eat their enemies. We're... Yeah, they're their enemies, but we're not that far from chimpanzees. But yeah, like you said, a lot of chi- lot of a lot of insects, really insects and reptiles. But there are mammals that do it. It's not uncommon, and we we may not know if what's the other species we forget couldn't figure out if it's a mammal or not. But we are mammals. I can tell you that much. All I all I keep thinking, unfortunately, when recording this, is the Lord of the Rings uh, scene where they go, "Meat's back on the menu, boys." Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we got kind of the history a bit. Let's talk about a little bit more modern, closer to home. Something which I know they were evil and did evil things during this time period. But boy, I did not know the depths of their crimes against humanity. So World War Two comes around. There's a fighting in the Pacific. The Japanese doing experimentation like Nazis. But didn't just stop at experimentation. The Japanese soldiers and officers were eating POWs, soldiers, civilians, cutting off arms, legs, making amputees to eat the flesh. And Nick, I this is I did not know about this dark history of World War Two. Yeah, it's uh, I knew a little bit about it, but and that's kind of all I want to know. I that is the most fucked up fighting maybe in the entire world would be fighting on the Pacific against the Japanese. I can't even imagine the shit those guys have must have seen or went through. Just oh god. Not not even just getting worried about getting shot or getting captured into a a camp for a prisoner of war, but you might get your limb chopped off and they might eat it in front of you. That's that's some twisted shit. Yeah, there's that's that's super fucked up. Moving on from the Japanese a little bit to where I think you'll come in more, Nick, is the Papua New Guinea scenario with cannibals. So it's at the stage, it's about the nineteen fifties. A tribe of about eleven thousand people. I don't even know if that's a tribe, I would just call that a city at that point. Well, this tribe called the Foray, about two hundred people a year died from a disease called the Kura. And for the longest time, explorers outside Papua New Guinea had no idea what Kura came from, why it caused. Just They just know 200 people a year would die from this tribe. And it was not based on age, sex. It was everyone from kids fem- uh, to adults, both male and female. Well, they traced it back from eating their dead. It was that funeral cannibalism I was talking about earlier. It was very popular, I'm not sure if it still is, a popular culture slash religious belief to eat the dead of your of your family members, your friends. And unfortunately, this leads to very bad things, especially if you eat the brain of the same species you are. Eating brains is dangerous thing. So even eating monkey brains, I believe, is also dangerous, but, but eating human brains can lead to the human equivalency of mad cow disease, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, this is like uh, <laughs> um, the the hunger from the episode of Always Sunny where Charlie and Dee eat Frank's leftover meat, and it's really good, and they keep wanting more. They're like, oh my gosh, we ate human meat. And we're just continually hungry for human meat, except they just got tapeworms, but they <laughs> thought they were getting sick from eating the human meat, except this will actually kill you. Yeah. And in case you're wondering, because I was wondering too, apparently human meat tastes kind of gamey, I guess. Depending, it kind of matters how you cook it, but some tribes and cultures call human meat uh, long pig, I believe was the translation. And some say it tastes like venison, from what 
I heard of. I don't know if you came across the same thing, Nick. <laughs> no, but long pig? Yeah, I believe that. That makes humans sound pretty fucking delicious, not going to lie. <laughs> I'm looking pretty good. Meat's back on the menu, boys. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I. that is funny. I really didn't look up at all about what humans tasted like. That there's only one way to find out. I'm I'm good. I'm gonna pass on that one because apparently enough people and our ancestors figured that stuff out. I mean, look, you got ten fingers. You don't use them all. Yes, I do. I'm an engineer. <laughs> You're a forester. You don't need no legs. It's not at all the same. Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, whatever. You just I don't know. Anyway, we'll get to what part of you we're gonna eat later. Oh boy, but. Sticking on with human diseases, it's kind of dangerous to eat your own species flesh because you got to think about uh, how disease transfer. It's diseases transfer usually amongst a species. They don't usually jump species too often. So when you're eating the dead, well, some tribes and cultures, they eat their victims raw. I don't know if victim's the right word for that, but that makes it, if they have any prior conditions or why they died in the first place don't forget if you're eating someone who died they died probably for a reason probably wasn't just old age you're transferring that onto yourself and even if you cook it i th- i still think brains are dangerous if i'm mistaken so from what from what i can tell right now is don't eat human brains no matter what we're not zombies yeah that seems like a pretty you know i'll jot that down in my list of rules don't eat human brains, but I think I had I had that somewhere on the list, I feel like. Yeah, you had to learn that one the hard way, didn't you, Nick? That seems like one where you learn the hard way and then you're done learning. <laughs> it's your final lesson. But that kind of brings us to modern cannibalism. And from what I can understand and see is modern cannibalism is either a art style, a remnant old culture still holding on to beliefs, or it's just uh, kind of a black market deal. In 2012, Customs contrabanded about 17,000 quote-unquote health pills, health capsules, whatever you want to call them, which contained human flesh. And the purpose of this was the same thing people try to buy rhino hordes for, for a solvable medicine. It seems like the 1400s of using mummies to heal all your wounds still exist throughout the world where 17,000 capsules of human flesh, well, at least containing human flesh, wanted throughout the market to be sold, which makes me wonder how many don't get sold. and also makes me wonder, where's that flesh coming from? Yeah, so did you hear about the Reddit cannibal? No. What is this? Do you know what I'm talking about? Okay, so I th- I can't remember. I th- I think it was on Reddit, but there was some, like, cannibal, like, chat. And this one guy was, he was dying. Like, he was going to die. And he wanted his body to be consumed by another person. And this other guy wanted to eat another human being. So, and this is super fucked. <laughs> So the guy who was dying went to the house of the guy who wanted to eat humans and they cut the guy's dick off, grilled it, and they each had some. Why is that your first... Why Why is that the first part you want to cut off when you're still alive? Not even when you're dead. Like, even dead, I don't understand. But alive? Why? And, and this is the best part. You know how you only get to try human dick once? I guess that's not true for most people. That's a very loaded question. I don't know how to answer that. (laughs) The guy left it on the grill and burnt it. This, I hate humans. I really do, Nick. Yeah, I hate humans. It didn't, from what I understand, it didn't like blacken burn, but it was like overdone. You know, you got to get, hit the meat thermometer with that thing. I'm, well, (laughs) so many bad jokes came to my head, like, if the da- if the dick was black and you burned down the grill, could you figure out if it was burnt or not? Or you have a meat thermometer, and if you stick it into a dick, is that sounding, or is that just checking the temperature? All right. 
how anyway <laughs> aren't you happy you know me nick all right but... that's a negative ghost rider all right, back to Kevin. so then so then the guy's like okay like i'm losing blood i'm gonna die now so the guy he goes into the tub full of ice and the guy kills him and it's all like uh allowed like they what's the word the guy's not it's not like he murdered him it was consensual assisted suicide and assisted suicide and uh and then the guy starts cutting him up and he got like i I think he ate like 46 pounds of the other guy of the guy who wanted to die and the cops eventually found out is somewhere in europe i forget where but the cops eventually found out because for because the guy was getting very specific on the like the cannibal chat boards about like <laughs> eating humans and stuff but then he got he they took him into prison but then he got out because there was no law against cannibalism but they did get him for like the suicide thing but they couldn't keep him for as long as they wanted him to i there's so many layers to this of a there's no cannibalism laws b there's a there's chat forum for cannibalists that's disturbing and c i'm still caught up on why would you not cut off a finger first or a hand and but why the dick how are you how are you gonna eat a dick if you have no fingers mike use your head for once well it seems like they ate the head so i i don't i don't know what to do nice i just got that <laughs> all right but there's a forum for cannibalism? Yeah, it's the internet. There's everything on there. God damn it. I don't want to live on this planet anymore. But also, there's no laws for cannibalism in that country? It... Well, not there There wasn't, but there sure <laughs> still is now. <laughs> but it's funny, though, because there's... I don't, well, it's not... I mean, the whole story is kind of funny. But, <laughs> but um, it's interesting how we treat cannibals. Right, they're now there's some they're seen as less than human once you eat humans. In Russia, there's four cannibals in a prison, and they basically it's like Hannibal Lecter. They're like in a cage, and they just move the cage around with them. Like they they don't like no one interacts with them. They're just like isn't that just Russia? when they go outside? Well, probably <laughs> a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. <laughs> but their like exercise time is they have a cage that's like movable. And they basically just connect one cage to the front and then move the other cage to the front. So he's always like in a cage, never sees anyone. We are freaked the fuck out by cannibals. And I mean, I'm not saying I'm not. I'm just saying like we as society, we don't like cannibals. Like not that we should, but we really don't like them. If I had to take an educated guess on why that is, I would say it has to do with we're adding another predator to our mix. Uh, that survival situation of always hoarding resources is one thing. Like, oh, this might be a competitor for my resources. But it's not just a competitor for my resources anymore. It might be a physical threat to my life. Those are similar, but two very different things. Yeah, that might be it. Or we just might not want to get eaten. But yeah. No, I, I see what you're saying. But yeah, it's... But it's always... Um, we've always been kind of like that. So many people know uh, about Columbus and his first voyage to the Americas. He came and he said the people were awesome. He said that they could become good Christians. And then the queen said, oh, like, well, if the people over there are cannibals, like, because the one tribe he interacted with said the other tribe ate people, the Caribs, which... Some people say they were cannibals. Some people say they weren't cannibals. It seems like there's good evidence that that's, that they did eat people. And maybe we don't know the context. I, I don't know. So I want to touch on I'm not going to say. I, okay. Um, well, let me finish and then we'll go back to the cribs. So, so my basically what I'm saying is as soon as Columbus, the queen said, okay, if they're cannibals, you can just enslave them. You can kill them. They're less than human. And Columbus... He went over there, looked for gold, couldn't find any gold, but he still needed money to pay for his voyage. He's like, yep, these people are cannibals. And then they enslaved him. But 
that's a long time ago that we still hated cannibals. But let's get back to the Caribs, Mike. So I didn't bring this up when I was doing the quick history of cannibals throughout cultures. Um, there's a lot around Christopher Columbus and the word cannibalism. So cannibal, the word, is actually kind of newish. I think it's, it's some debate. Christopher Columbus came up with it. Uh, we're not quite sure. It might be a little older than that. But somewhere around the 1500s is where the first i guess modern word cannibal comes from now he, again humans have been eating other humans for eons quite literally eons since you know the dawn of man but this was kind of the first time the word cannibal was solidified in history though i mean christopher columbus is somehow involved with this i don't know if he truly came up with that word or he was just happy to be credited with it but yeah, everything like what you just said, Nick, where you go, well, couldn't find any gold. Let's just enslave these people. And let's say they are cannibals. That's that's just playing on the taboo of cannibalism. For some reason, it's so ingrained into us to dislike, discuss. And like you said, I think perfect word for it was make them less than human, Nick. Dehumanize them because they're a cannibal, which I can see. But I'm also very wary from it, standing from an outside perspective. Yeah, because there's a lot of cultures that traditionally ate their dead. Is that what you're saying? That, And this is kind of part that ties into our morality one, how you were talking about, okay, like someone with the red dress, basically you're conditioned to dislike someone. Could that be an instinct? There's cultures where cannibalism is okay, and so that I think that our view of cannibalism, it's not in our genetics to not be cannibals. It's the culture we came up in. Yes and no. So I know, I think I could be mistaken on this. There's a tribe, I believe it's in India, where after, after a lot of, Is that the Maori tribe, I think? Is it the one with the ashes in the river? Yeah. Yes, that tribe, if I remember correctly, that tribe is something to do with releasing the soul or some part of them of the uh, human body is the most divine thing god created so might as well consume it something something along those lines which i can see i it's very weird i don't from a very dry non-emotional state meets meat and if you're starving you're hungry i can see that and then from a little bit inside the bubble i mean if it's your culture and stuff like that and they're already dead. I don't really see a... I mean, I don't think it's the greatest idea, but I can see where they're coming from. But when... I don't know. It's just... It just doesn't seem the most ethical or the smartest decision to make of eating your own species. Maybe it's something inert in our DNA that makes us go, well, humans have diseases. Don't eat things that have diseases. Yeah. So I, I was wrong. I was thinking Maori... I said Maori is the actually Agori, Agora tribe. But yeah, Snow Whites, there's a lot of cultures around the world that ritually consume flesh because it's like giving back. And they believe that, just like the Reddit guy, that their body and their spirit will live on in the people who consume their flesh. Well, this might be jumping ahead, but can I ask you a moral question, Nick? So I think there's a difference. I believe there's a difference, but I'm not sure why. Why is it more unethical to eat a body for its nutrients, such as like a human dies, than it is to bury human, let them fertilize your field, take that grain, and then feed a cow to slaughter and eat that meat? Why is one, at least in my mind, more ethical than the other and i'm wondering is that the same for you and why that is no i definitely see your point but for one so for the burial in a sense they're being broken down De through the process of decomposition they're for lack of more scientific term returning to the earth right so yes maybe you're consuming the nutrients from that body i mean not really if they're six feet deep which is standard grave digging depth there's not much decomposition going on there as opposed to higher up in the soil layer. 
but they're being broken down into other forms that are then used. You're not eating the meat directly. So it's simply distancing yourself from where that nutrients come from. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. I I feel like like it's like you're you're returning them to the earth and then you're just consuming whatever the earth produced. It's like you well, you start from dust and now you're dust again. It's kind of the same concept. It's not you started from dust and now you're a happy meal. <laughs> da, 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 da. You'll turn out as shit. I'm just going to cut that out. Uh, I see that point, but if you're always looking for nutrients to finish the cycle of life and death, to keep that that rhythm going, that balance going... Why is adding an extra step necessary? I mean, praying mantises, they female eats the male when get, after giving birth because it has nutrients for X amount of reasons. I don't quite know the praying mantis biological life form. But why not just do that with humans? Why go on the extra step of burying them, of having a ritual why why do we make it a ritual i'm asking very odd questions but hey we're talking about cannibals here so for the praying mantis so what's is consumed after mating so what the goal of of life is to reproduce the biological goal of life i know everyone has their own goals but biologically it is to reproduce and raise offsprings to carry on your genes like we said in instincts, we're all children of survivors. We also are all children of people who reproduced. So, when the praying mantis dies or is is cannibalized by his own, he reproduces, and his DNA is passed on, and then he is consumed to give the mother a better chance to survive. So he. His life's mission was complete. He's there to reproduce. He did it. And now what's the point? He's, his genetic lineage is benefiting from that cannibalism. Humans, it's not quite the same. For 99.9999% of the time, you don't get consumed after you mate. Well, what? There is that one chick who did. I can't remember what her name was, but that's about it. Well, what if we change the scenario and not just mate, but once you kind of reach the end of your cycle and you can't mate anymore, you sacrifice your body. Like, this is going to sound really weird, but like, say your grandfather can't produce children anymore. Why does not he not just sacrifice his nutrients, resources to his offspring to, for a better chance of survival? So... In this hypothetical scenario, Viagra would be a life-saving drug. <laughs> it is already. <laughs> um, well, I think the biggest point there is that we're not a nutrient-starved society. Yes, but we've been eating humans since humans first formed. And we've been doing it all throughout time. I, I guess this is a question. I didn't cross, cross this in my research, but... Cannibalism, like we said with Christopher Columbus, was still considered considered taboo. When did it turn taboo? Is it just different culturally based? And if so, why even when we're a nutrient starved species in you know throughout history, why was that not considered a more normalized option? I'm spitballing here, throwing a bunch of shit at the wall, seeing what sticks. Because we are, like you said, a civilized society, and to eat our own, we would be animals. That's something that occurs in the animal kingdom. That's not something that humans do. And so, like we said, to eat your own, you're seen as less than human, and people look at you as less than human. So I think it's something that we have in our heads that says, this is beneath us. Like, we should be able to rise above this. I, I don't know. That just That's my guess. I kind of, is that because we look down on, yeah, like we look down on animals and we think that we're so much higher above them for our moral actions. And that's probably like the biggest one, if I had to guess. I quite like that. And 
if I may on to it, that it inspired me with the thought process of maybe all humans, we all see each other as a tribe in some form, and we don't want to hurt or eat another member of our tribe. It's quite different when we're on a large scale, you know, when we can clearly see the teams, it's easy, but if we can't quite see the teams or we're on the same teams, we still want to respect and honor them. I really like that, how we try to differ ourselves from animals, Nick. I think that's somewhat in the right direction of the truth. Yeah, so that was my good idea for the day. All right. But I, I don't know what else it would be. I mean, yeah, so we know eating people leads to diseases, but having unprotected sex leads to diseases, and that hasn't stopped us at all. <laughs> that is a very valid argument, which I did not think about. Well, then, can I ask you another hypothetical, which might not be a hypothetical? Sure. All right. So that Redditor guy who ate dick and... Oh, In the not gay way. It's not gay if it's cannibal. It's not gay if it's cannibalism. Uh, and you said no homo first. <laughs> Well, is it illegal? Imagine burning your friend's dick. <laughs> That's not a sentence I thought I would ever hear. <laughs> Imagine burning your friend's dick. <coughs> All right. Um, so that guy who did this act didn't get as much time because, you know, at this time, capitalism or had no laws against it. Was... Would it be illegal to synthetically grow human flesh for consumption? Like, instead of 3D printing steaks, you're 3D printing human flesh. You're stem cell growing, I don't know, a thigh, but this time it's not a chicken, it's of a person. And could you search for certain genomes in... DNA sequences for humans to, to make humans taste better to grow different human flesh. All right, I guess that's a lot of questions, but all right. So uh, it, I would say if you are growing human flesh and you're searching for different human genomes to that taste better, that's super fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know, I don't know why. But it was like, I was like entertaining the idea and you're like, and then we selectively breed humans for taste. It's like, all right, there's the line. We found the line. <laughs> all right, let's backtrack a little bit. Is it okay? Because different cultures have different meats that are on the menu, different things that are edible. Yeah, some people serve long pig. <laughs> some people serve long pig. <laughs> Is it okay? To do, would it be... God, for lack of better words, humane to grow human meat through stem cells to feed people. So the objective is good. The way to do it seems pretty fucked up because my question would be, well, why can't you just grow uh, like pork or beef? All right. This is all hypothetical, but. What if we could... Hypothetically, yes. I no, mean... no, 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 no. I was going to add on to the hypothetical of what if okay. we figured out one day that human meat is better for you than beef and cow or something like that? Like, you know how chicken's supposed to be... So it's a superfood. It's super trendy, like avocados and avocado toast it's the, it's... and avocado on something else. It's the avocado of flesh. So, well, here's the thing. If it's... The avocado of anything, it's going to get produced. And just like avocados, a lot of people are going to produce it at once in somewhat unethical ways. Okay. Let, so, let's, let, yes, I think that. I think it'd be more like a black market thing. Well, that's already happening. Well, all right. Yeah, good well, point. All right. So, it's been. On Reddit. Oh, God. <laughs> it's kind of. Artsy, if I remember correctly, there's a man in Japan who eats human flesh and he either does it for a statement or, or arts reasons or just religious beliefs. I'm not quite sure. I can't quite remember. But I imagine it could be into a trend to eat human flesh. I feel like that's a real possibility with our society. 
I also hey Mike, I'm I'm, I'm about to blow your mind, oh, but that that is a trend. Wait, what? Are you familiar with the growing number of mothers who are eating their own placenta? Oh, that I know. Yes. Oh, well, it's like the same thing, isn't it? I was thinking more like someone offers a piece of their skin to be trendy and to eat or you know we do grow something like this new 21st century chef tries to change up the market by growing human flesh into it from stem cells to for consumption for burgers so it's quite artsy and trendy to do that and i was gonna then ask is that morally okay here's uh have you read the entire hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy series not the entire series just the first book Okay, I think in one of the second or third books, they go to the restaurant at the end of the galaxy, and this like um, animal comes up and is like, "Hey, I'm your meal today. What part of me would you like to eat?" And everyone's like, "Oh, like that's super fucked up." And the waiter's just like, "Well, wouldn't it be like more rude to eat an animal that doesn't want to be eaten?" That's a valid argument. Like, imagine imagine you're sitting on a menu. It's a interactive menu with a human traced out, and you can choose what you want to eat off a synthetically grown human for consumption. You want to eat the liver, the heart, the thigh, the arm, the, the face. We'll talk about – we might talk about tweakers and pixie dust in a minute, but it's – I don't know. It doesn't seem morally right to me, but I also – if it's synthetically grown, don't see the reason why it can't happen. Like, I might not agree with it, but I also don't see it being necessarily against needing to be against the law. Does that make sense? Right, because no one's being harmed, right? So, kind of like we talked about in, in Freedom, I forget whose quote it was, but I said a just law is that you your freedoms aren't limited as long as you're not harming others. So no one's being harmed. So in a sense, what is the harm? I don't know. At some level, it might just be my human brain in me going, that's fucked up. Yeah. But, but again, and I, and I guess that's the whole point with like the Reddit thing too. Like the guy was going to die. This is how he wanted to die. No one was harmed. No one's feelings were hurt. His dick no was cut off when he was wish- alive. He wanted that. Does, all right. Now, I'm not saying that makes it right. It's pretty fucked up. I get that. But n- not, there, was no, there were no transgressions. There, was no, there were no transgressions. Just, just, this still doesn't make it right. All right, to so me. mini episode, what is the morality of cutting someone's dick <laughs> off if you're going to eat it? You know. If it's going to be consumed. You know. Every time you keep, every time we say dick gets cut off, mine slowly goes into my body more and more out of protectiveness. And every time you say like it was grilled, it just it hurts my soul a bit. But switching it up a little bit for my own my own morality, you did talk about a modern trend of cannibalism with the placenta, which is also on a different layer, different scale, quite common. So, cannibalism in its base core is eating human parts, human, yeah, for the back of the words, parts. And a large portion of the entire world bites and eats their fingernails, which is disgusting. Please don't do that. That's cannibalism, I'm technically. Gonna, I'm going to tell my wife you said that. That is. Well, she doesn't eat them. But she bites her nails all the fucking time. <laughs> well, if she ate them, she'd be a cannibal. If she just bites at them, she's disgusting. So she's just sampling? She Yeah, she's just simply doing a wine tasting. You know, when you spit it out instead of swallowing it? She's just doing that yeah. with, with, with human products. So anyway, eating placenta. As one apparently does. Well, what else would you do with it? Donate it, which is in fact a pretty... Uh, wanted item for the medical donations well yeah i would say probably donate it first but if it's their own placenta i mean 
their body, their choice. They can do what they want with it, right? I don't, I don't, I don't know. This omelets. is a this is a weird question. talking omelets. Oh God, please don't don't ruin omelets for me. Like that's a sacred food to me. Don't ruin omelets. Okay, so the I was, I wasn't able to read the book in time, but there's a book called Cannibals. And it's written by a zoologist and he document, he was offered to go eat this woman's placenta, Bill Shoot. I've heard him speak a few times. He's pretty knowledgeable. So this woman offered him, she's like, Hey, like she herself is a, like a, some, I don't know. I don't know how childbirth works. I'm not a dad. She goes to people's houses, she helps them give birth, and then she will collect the placenta and then prepare it for them. Her husband is a chef who will prepare prepare the placenta in any way they like. So he went down there because he wrote a book on cannibals. He's like, I, I mean, I have to do this, right? Like, I'm writing the book. Like, if she's offering, I have to do this. So he went down there and he had some and he was like, yeah, it was good. I mean, I'm never doing it again. I just want to do it the one time, but then they made it into like tacos, I believe. Not omelets, Mike. You're safe. I hate this. This It's, it seems like that placenta could be used for so many other uses. And I'm with you, Nick. I'm not. I doubt my man expert in childbirth. I don't really know. I that part when the placenta gets involved. I uh, yeah, it's so it's not uncommon in the animal kingdom for mothers to eat the placenta, just like cannibalism. It is uncommon for humans to do, or was uncommon, I guess. It's still not common. But it's still not good. So the placenta, when it's not used, it's most mostly donated, and it helps with uh, people who have really severe burns. The placenta will help like stimulate your skin growth and, and stuff like that. I keep thinking that we try to separate us humans from the animal kingdom, but we've come so far, but yet we really haven't. We're still still the basic animals amongst the animal kingdom we might have marvelous godlike technology but at the end of the day we're just an animal in some form or shape and if i'm writing a book on cannibalism i i i ain't eating anybody i'm sorry that's just that's just how it is well it shows how not committed to books on cannibalism you are damn straight i i you know, I'm down to do crazy and inventive and try new things, but I'm not for not going to probably eat a human being. Okay, now you jog my memory. So the the one I was talking about wasn't from Reddit. That was this this story I'm about to tell. That's from Reddit. So a guy was getting his foot amputated for I'm assuming diabetes, but I don't know, and he asked people to come over to um to eat his foot if they wanted to and they grilled it into tacos i wish you could see my face right now it is in my hands going what what all right this is another question nick if you had to eat another person what would you make from that person would it be a steak would it be tacos what would what would it be well, that would depend on the scenario. So, am I, am I, am I like, why am I eating human? I guess is the question I'm asking. Uh, I'm just saying you. It's not survival. You're just simply doing it to try it. How do you do it? To how would you cook? To All right. Try so it? if so, and so this is my problem with the whole eating the foot thing in tacos. If I'm going to eat something to find out the taste. I'm not going to make tacos. So uh, in California, when I lived there uh, for a summer doing timber cruising, there's a bunch of um, 
the rattlesnakes outside our house. So we'd kill them. And the first one almost got me by accident. I wasn't really paying attention. And so I killed it and ate it to show dominance. As one does. And as one does. And I was like, well, I want to know what rattlesnake tastes like. So I just kind of grilled it, but I didn't put any seasoning on it. And then after that, we would put seasonings on them. It's, they're pretty simple to cook. And I just wanted to make it edible. So if I was going to eat human to find out the taste, yeah. I'm going to, you know, just grill it like a steak. But if I'm eating a survival situation, I'd put some kind of seasoning on it or something so it doesn't taste like human. Because that seems more ethical to me. But in a survival situation, you probably only have human. But what happens if human tastes really good? But what happens if it's just like the survival situation where if you are in a survival situation where you're forced to eat people and you eat human flesh, there's not enough fat on the human flesh to sustain you. So you just want more of it, which makes people think that it's addictive. But in reality, they just need fats. Clearly, you've not seen some Americans <laughs> with not enough fats on them. In a survival situation, that fat's gone. <laughs> Fair enough. I don't think in a survival situation I could eat another person. Another live person. No. I Or another dead person. No person at all. I don't think any person at all. Because... Well, Mike, in a survival situation, if it was between life or death and I had to eat a dead person, I'm eating a dead person. So it looks like I'm going to win in the game of survival. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I... I don't know. Death doesn't scare me, but it just seems to not have your morals, to not have more. It, I don't know. It just doesn't seem right. And if I'm going to die, might as well die with my chin up, so to speak. Might as well be better to not die at all. That's what I always say. I don't know. There's some things that are worse than uh, worse than death and I, I imagine that's got to play on someone's psyche of eating another person's flesh if they didn't initially want to, but just did it out of desperation. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it fucks with you, but it's, I don't know. Survive first, figure it out later. Uh, the, the survival's the name of the game, man. That I just. I want to live to do a bunch of fun things. I don't particularly want to die yet. That does make me think. How does. Because I imagine there hasn't been many times in the 20th and 21st century where humans had to eat other humans for survival situations. There's been famous ones like I think it was 1979 plane crash and the snow tundra where they had to eat people. But I don't think there's that many cases. I wonder how that affects people's psyche. Where or Do people rationalize it? Do people... Well, I mean, there are a lot of cases currently. We just don't know about it i know north korea cannibalism is not uncommon in fact kim jong-un had to crack down on cannibalism during one of their grain shortages or whatever the fuck that they can't feed everyone and in other countries like that it's not uncommon for people to eat other people so it is not it's not uncommon, but it's it's not rare, I guess, in certain locations. But we're not going to be able to study those people. Okay, I stand corrected. So it's hard to study. I'll reword it that way. I'm wondering if people have remorse when they do it, where people rationalize it, where they don't think. Or maybe people crave it more. Maybe I'm very curious on... Cause being in survival situations in different environments activates different genomes. If you're in a survival situation where you have to eat another human, I imagine that's got to activate different genomes and change your brain pattern the way you think. I'm just wondering how that'd be. I don't know. It's just <laughs> food for thought. Just uh, just throwing that out there. Just an idea. Oh, fuck. Well, I think once you're starving, entirely different parts of your brain start going off and you throw morality out the window, if I had to guess. And not only if I had to guess, but as history has shown us time and time again. Yes, it's uh, like you said, Nick, with mainly a lot of poor countries like North Korea. When uh, the poor go hungry, when the poor get hungry, the rich get eaten. That seems a very common theme throughout all of history and, I would guess, modern day society. 
Yep. But I want to talk about the Dahmer party real quick, Mike. The what? The Donner party? I don't know what that is. Wait, you don't know about the Donner party? We're doing an episode on cannibals, and you don't know about the Donner party. No, I didn't come across it. The group traveling west for a better life? Oh, yes. Yes, sorry. Yes, for some reason, Jamestown came in my mind. But no, I know exactly what you're talking about now. Sorry. Okay, thank God. So, and this is... I'm gonna get, this is the craziest shit about the Dahmer party that I've ever heard. So the Dahmer party, a group traveling west that eventually ended up turning to cannibalism to survive. Do you know who the accountant who got them all set up on their journey was? I'm trying to think. This is probably what, 18, early 1800s? John Wilkes Booth? I don't know. Good, damn, pretty fucking close. Abraham Lincoln. Oh shit, are you serious? I am serious, and he almost went with them. Oh my god. That one decision completely changed the entire world. Holy crap, I didn't know it was Lincoln. We almost lost the man who freed the slaves to cannibalism. All right, no, well, now I got to now I got to wonder if he did go, would he be the last man standing or would he be the first to go? He'd probably be the first to go if I had to guess. Too nice, just but he was a too nice weak orator. He wasn't. He was a wrestler. So, so I'm gonna. T- I want to tell basically the quick points of the Dahmer party real quick. So Dahmer party, a group traveling west, search for better life. Land was cheap out there, expensive in the Midwest. Not and so we call it the reverse effect of today. <laughs> so. They're going, and they decide if they want to take a cutoff or not based on this guy's book. And the leader of the group doesn't want to go that way. He gets expelled. He gets expelled from the group. His wife and kids stay with the group that's taking the cutoff way. They go up the cutoff. They left too late. It's going to get pretty snowy. They keep going. They're farther and farther behind. Eventually, they get stuck, and they get spread out. They get spread out in these camps, and... They got all these guys helping them, but there's like four or five different camps and they slowly start starving and starving and starving and each camp kind of descend into chaos in different ways, right? So as this is going on, some of the, the, the stronger people decide we're stuck in the mountains with nowhere to go. We need to get help. So for the strongest people, like two men, a woman and one boy, one child, the strongest of like 74 people walk to go get help. And who do they find? The original leader of the group, Reed, who was kicked out for his incompetence as a leader. So he comes back with a rescue party to rescue these people. And they they find one of the camps and they bring the people down. Meanwhile, in this other camp, these guys go out uh, like a husband and a wife and they kill a bear or a deer i can't exactly remember and they bring it back to the camp only to find out and after they kill this deer whatever it was they immediately start eating it raw they bring it back to the camp to find out that the people in the camp have already consumed a human a dead human but a human what are you gonna do like you bring back this fresh deer like don't worry guys we're not gonna starve and they look up as they're holding someone's leg bone you uh you sleep with a knife and you get the fuck away from that group. That's my first instinct. So another party, another camp that was stranded out. These guys were stranded through a few like different miles apart, depending on how fast everyone traveled. Had two Indians in it, Native Americans. They ended up dying, and the group ate them. And then the next day... They were rescued by those Native Americans' tribe. Oof. Big Can What would you say? Like, like that? how fucked up is that? Yeah, you just lie. You just say, nope, they they went off to get help, and we didn't see them come back. But can you imagine being Reed, the guy who got kicked out of the party for your incompetency because you didn't want to go a certain way, and having to come back and rescue the people, your wife, who was who decided to go with the other group? 
I mean, she could never say I was right again. And that's the dream. <laughs> I mean, she may or may not have eaten a person, but like the dream. But this guy, this Reed, to get people to come help him help these people, he fought in a war for these guys to come get them to help rescue him. It, the, the whole Dahmer party is like, what a wild story. You have one of the most famous people in history as your accountant. Like, uh, just so, so much stuff went down. And some of the people turned crazy. I mean, obviously, Mike, like you're saying. Like, when they were found, the one the woman in one of the camps, she asked the men who came to rescue them, are you angels or are you from California? <laughs> Nick, that kind of so, that kind of question from California, you're that qu- not an angel. That question still kind of holds up. Are you yeah. are you an, are you an angel or are you a Californian? How does that hold up? Because it was a dumb joke about you know people from California, the devil, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I know, I know several Californians, and they they do not fit that bill. Looking at you, Chandler. It's very one this. This story needs to be made into a movie, too. It's a pretty fucked up movie. I don't know who's going to make it. Uh, probably the guy who made The Reverend, right? Leonardo DiCaprio ate, you know, raw liver. I mean, raw liver from a bear, raw liver from a human. Can you really tell the difference? Well, that kind of brings up a question with DiCaprio eating a bear liver and what's the difference between a human liver and a bear liver? If someone, let's say, Nick, you travel to a foreign country and you ate a meal and it happened to be human flesh would you be upset would you be nauseous what, what would be your first initial reaction if you said someone told you you just ate human flesh you didn't know oh didn't fuck <laughs> yep all right that's a very honest I mean, answer can't undo what's done that's like in indian the second indiana jones the worst well <laughs> It used to be the worst of the Indiana Jones, and then Crystal Skull came out. But uh, when they they ate the monkey brains, which we know is bad now, but uh, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do to blend in, right? Speak several different languages. I can blend into any culture. You'll never find me. Uh, not the can, uh, not the camels, horses. Uh, but anyhow. I, it makes me curious on how that affects the scenario if you accidentally eat human meat. I didn't think I'd say that sentence in my lifetime, but if you accidentally eat human meat like you didn't know or you accidentally ordered the wrong thing off the menu because it's got a weird name or something like that, is that less unethical if eating humans is unethical? Do you have you, do you watch Always Sunny? Yeah. Uh, occasionally not i'm not all of them have you seen the cannibal one it's been a minute so i'm gonna go with no but right. probably so i'm gonna re- refresh everyone so they think they've eat human meat and they have this hunger for it now like you said it turned out to be a tapeworm because it was raccoon meat but they're they go to an asian place and they're asking like hey can we get like monkey because they think that they need human meat to cure their hunger that they have from eating human meat. And they're like, they're like, you can't just go to an Asian place and ask for monkey. They're not going to have monkey. And the guy's like, hey, we have monkey. <laughs> and it still didn't cure the hunger because, again, it's tapeworms. So they go to the morgue. <laughs> and they're going to try and cut up a person for human meat. And the the guy's like, yeah, you can have do whatever you want with the corpse. You, you give me 50 bucks. So they go in. And it's a black guy, and they're like, oh, well, I can't. I can't do that. It's like, do you have, like, a white guy? He's like, well, it'd be racist to not eat him, right? So they get all fucked up, and they can't worry. They can't figure out if it's racist or not because they don't want to eat him because it's a black guy because they like, they're like, well, you know, I don't really like dark meat. It's just the, f- and it turns out to be tapeworms, but it's just the best, probably one of my favorite Always Sunny in Philadelphia episodes. It's fucking hilarious. You did... You did make me think of some more interesting questions. So, since we talked about earlier with, you know, do hum, do different humans with different culture bath, 
backgrounds have different flavors. I imagine men and women taste differently. And I imagine age, diet, all that's got to be in effect. So, all right, let's start. Well, yeah, let's look at the animal kingdom. All right, if you get like a cow tag, you know, like you want to kill a female elk. You can't tell how old they are, so you kill the smallest one. It's most likely the youngest. The biggest elk don't taste as good as the youngest elk, and that's just, like, the way it is. All right, well, let me ask you this question. Do you think males... Oh, this is this is a very loaded question. This is a loaded question. <laughs> I can already tell you that. <laughs> Do you think... <laughs> <laughs> do you think i feel like you're trying to clip this to put it somewhere <laughs> no i'm not blackmailing you i swear do you think males or females would taste better well i'm gonna go with i'm gonna go with males and i'll tell you why okay so what what mars let's say wood what's an what makes trees not as good not as structurally sound stress. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say that men experience less stress than women. And for that reason, I'm going to go with that it would be better to eat a male than a female because you'll have less stress and the muscles won't be as stressed out. So I have two sets of mindsets with this. One being... Women predominantly have more fat on their bodies, which means it might taste better that way. The other... She's thick. Two C's. Two C's. Uh, the other... Obviously two C's. The other premise is chemicals. I'm wondering... All right, so there's two There's two ways this can go. One is... Does estrogen... There's no good ways this can go, but continue. I'm, dude, I'm so deep down the rabbit hole, it doesn't matter anymore. Does estrogen make the meat taste better than testosterone? And the other mindset was, when you're hunting, you don't want the animal to be scared because that can spoil the meat. It changes the meat flavor from scared animal versus non-scared animal. And I would say predominantly because females in most species are the smaller the two, they have more to worry about, more concerns. They well, that's that's not true. Predominantly, females are larger. For mammals? Mm, I, I don't know specifically about mammals, but I'd say overall, I, the females are larger. It, I, it, I might have misspoken. In my mind, I'm just mainly thinking mammals. Okay. Um, mammals, you might be right. I'm not. I can't comment on that. All right, we'll just say this. So for human, male and females, males tend to be bigger. They tend to be more powerful in, because of testosterone chemicals, they're, they're, how their skeleton system's built. And I imagine that makes us, well, at one, makes us males dumber because we're also less fearful. And females tend to be more cautious and fearful because they more aware of the environment. So it makes me wonder, does that change the meat flavor of having more fear in your life based on your sex. You see, is that do those two statements come from where testosterone, estrogen, estrogen, I wonder how that affects the meat, and I wonder how fear affects the meat for humans. Okay, I think we said the same thing in very different ways. Okay, okay. Okay. Good. Uh, and I don't think it's good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think we said the same thing. I don't know if it was intelligent or not, it's it seems pretty fucked up, but I guess we're on the same page for when it comes to eating humans. Yeah, uh, I'm just I, I I don't think I need to say this, but I'm just gonna say it. Please, please don't kill and eat other humans. Anyone listening, don't don't do that. Second, I second that. Okay, switching up a little bit about ki well, killing and eating humans. Why do you think we're so fascinated with our movie culture? Like we have. Hannibal Lecter, Dexter, just all these different... Personal favorite, Bone Tomahawk, I texted you about. Oh, that's a great movie. What a fucked up movie. <laughs> great movie, but fucked up movie. For, for some reason, cannibals are the perfect villains? I say that with a question. Because you can't... 
you can't emphasize with you can't like in Star Wars you can see where Darth Vader's coming from when he's like a person but a cannibal especially in like Bone Tomahawk they are pure evil pure bad there's no good in them I wouldn't say they're pure evil I would just say they're cold very disconnected very unhuman like we said earlier in the podcast I I wouldn't put them as evil. I would just put them as disconnected or mentally broken. Which begs the question of when people eat other humans today, not eating dicks because someone offered you their dick, which is a weird this is a weird podcast. This I'm just gonna just gonna snip that real <laughs> quick, put that on the YouTubes. Uh I wonder why that is a very gravitational point for some serial killers slash people. I mean, hell, even with like bath salts, it's very common. Well, not I don't I don't know how to take this with a grain of salt. I have no evidence or clue, but you hear stories about it all the time of people high on bath salts eating other people's faces or biting other people's faces. Why is that so instinctual when they're spun out of their mind? Because we're supposed to be better than that. I don't, I don't know, man. But it, I I agree with you. I hear stories about people on bath salts and other other Florida men eating people all the time. Can we say even Florida men? I mean, your state's the one with all the drugs legal. I imagine you have more people eating other people's faces than Florida now. Yeah, it's probably so common it doesn't make the news. When does not when does cannibalism become normalized? See Portland. See <laughs> I don't know. Portland. <laughs> Uh, I, I sorry. I just asked. I don't. Th- I I'm pretty sure they're not eating people up there. I'll say that with like a ninety percent certainty. But that ten percent though. <laughs> that ten percent though. I uh, sorry. I asked you a bunch of questions. My mind's kind of gone all over the place because this is so weird. This is. I'll be honest. I've never really thought about cannibalism until researching for this episode i just kind of have you really not how many have you never had a friend ask you what scenario would you eat a person in yeah but that was like high school yeah totes me too <laughs> That's a, so i kind of forgot about that you know <laughs> like other things came up i i don't know it just it just seems something so ancient and forgotten but yet it's still relevant still very relevant it's <laughs> happening all the time and will continue to happen as food shortages occur, lack of food. I mean, it doesn't take long. I mean, it takes relatively long, I guess, but it always ends up in the same place. If you have a lack of food and there's dead people around you, it seems more often than not you're going to eat them Yeah, because I, our will to survive is that strong. Texas is just one more blizzard away. Yo, fuck yeah, bud. I'm sure I'm sure there's some cases of cannibalism in Texas after that blizzard. <laughs> That's so dark, but yet still so funny. Keep recording, but uh, do you have any more hypothetical questions or such? Uh, give me 30 seconds. Cool. I imagine, too, with... Okay. Yep. I imagine, too, with... Not only the population increasing and, you know, food shortages are shrinking. Go check out an episode we did about the future of food, which is on Backyard Philosophy, anywhere you listen to podcasts or on YouTube. I imagine meat of different variants is going to come back on the menu. And it might become more, more normalized, less unethical to eat not quote unquote wasted the dead in a nice way to say that and i can see once or if we get to like 9 to 11 billion people that if you die your body simply goes to a processing plant for food which i'm not for but i can also see us humans doing that yeah i mean it's i think it's changing of what humans do for the dead now i don't think we'll ever eat them you say that Unless but humans eat desperate humans. as shit as a society on a societal level 
Because that would mean, as a society, we're starving. That's like some North Korea shit right there. Not necessarily, because, I mean, look at other human cultures that eat it for funeral rites. What happens if your funeral rite was, I don't want my body to be wasted, and they want to be eaten, and that became very common and traditional? Okay, well, I guess back to the first question you asked me, is that what if you dig a shallow grave and your body is decomposed in the soil in the layer where it's close down to the top where you get decomposition that occurs. I imagine it's... Your body's not wasted. It's returning to the earth, and no one has to eat anyone. Well, I'm not an expert, but rotten bodies smell horrible, so I think turning them into fertilizer first, then fertilizing would probably be the way to go. Well, that's... I mean... So now we're arguing opposite points than we were originally, I think. Because... I mean, yeah, d decaying body smell. I mean, out in the woods, I never smelled a human body decaying, but you come across dead elk, dead bear, dead deer. I mean, things die, and it just smells like dead things. But that's, just, I don't know, it's part of nature. But I, I think, me personally... I think there's a difference between rotting above ground and rotting a little bit below ground. Your body will still decom decompose. Like a, an old log that's thrown down in the forest due to wind, fire, whatever, lands on the ground, gets partially buried. That's a nurse log. Other trees will grow on the nutrients of that decomposing tree. It doesn't need to be completely above ground to provide those nutrients. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just trying to figure out. My original question was, why is it more unethical to eat a human straight up than it is to use them as fertilizer? Oh, well, I mean, that's because there's a degree of separation there. That's the point I came to after I asked the question early in the podcast. So, I mean... So we're back to where we started from classic yeah this is i don't know this is just a weird episode for me and just in general I'm kind of all over the board it's just it's like me someone's saying something dumb and then i'm trying to rationalize in my head of why they would say that and that's but i'm it's a mirror that's the best analogy i can come up with on the spot of what, what my brain is happening right now yeah well thank you to uh dan your jack for that uh that thought right there well, I don't have anything else besides, uh, well, that's pretty much it. All I have about cannibalism is that the European monarchy ate people way later than any other American nobles, I guess you could call them, did. So another win for the USA right there. Back-to-back <laughs> -back world war champs. Back-to-back <laughs> -back world champs. And we didn't eat people. Yeah, that's an overall Just, I win. I mean, except for the Dahmer party. And Jamestown. And Jamestown. And Florida. Look, there's situations. <laughs> you got to do what you got to do to survive. Yeah. those. There's a difference between eating people to survive and because you can afford to, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those tweakers, they spent the whole $5 on pixie dust for it. Yeah. Now, and then we come back, I guess, at the end with Florida and start eating people again. So I guess we... <laughs> In a sense, win <laughs> once again over England. So suck it, England. Ugh. Well, I'd be very curious to hear on other people's opinions on cannibalism because I don't know about you, Nick, but I was all over the board. I there's a lot of scenarios, a lot of cultures, a lot. Of, it's extremely ingrained into society and history. And I would love to know more about it. And where could they find us if they want to tell more information about it? You can find us on YouTube and Instagram. Can they find us on Twitter? No, because Twitter is the virtual version of cannibalism. People who are on Twitter eat their own figuratively, not literally, because that's, I guess, where Reddit <laughs> comes in, but f figuratively, people on Twitter eat their own. Yeah, yeah. And what about books, Nick? What are you currently reading? I'm about to finish wayfinding how humans, how the technology, how, uh, it's, basically it's about how humans navigate. And I just read a crazy chapter about how the Pacific Islanders would lie flat 
in a deep well in their boat and feel the vibrations and the waves from islands to navigate from island to island. Vibrations so minute that we have trouble picking up with current technology, but humans are able to feel it just based on experience. Yeah, that still hurts my head. And they're able to recreate it time and time again. It's it's insane. Humans are weird. That is for certain. We are super intelligent. We can't explain why we do the things that we do, but we can beat so many computers in so many ways. <laughs> it, it is insane. Yeah, how many computers do you know? That I mean, just think humans? about the technology required to populate an entire planet. And we did it before we were able to record history. Us humans, we're good There's at surviving. There's very few other species that can survive on every single continent. Well, six out of seven continents. <laughs> Five out of six, depending on where you went to school. Anyway, Mike, what are you reading? I'm reading a book that's kind of appropriate for cannibalism. I'm reading Dune still. Um, for Dune, this is not a spoiler or anything, but water is very important in a desert planet. So it's a saying in the book of, the body is his own, but the water belongs to the tribe. And they dehydrate the body of its liquid to help give water to the people of the tribe, which I found very fitting for this cannibalism story, even though that's not a main plot or point of the book. But Red Dune before, back in high school, rereading it again, absolutely love it. Okay, that kind of reminds me of something we didn't talk about, don't really need to get to. We can cut this if we want. Catholics eating the body of Christ. Yeah. You familiar with communion? I am. And eating the flesh and drinking the blood of Jesus. I don't know where that fits in, and I don't know how to go from there. So why don't you lead us, Nick? Well, I, I mean, I don't really know where to go either. But, yeah, I mean, as Catholics, we believe that the communion wafer and the wine is through the process of oh my gosh what it's called becomes the physical body and blood of jesus christ the son of god and then we eat that and it's just like chill why <laughs> mike that's a good question <laughs> um and i didn't really th- think too much into it and i still haven't which is apparent but it's just kind of like it's weird that as catholicism which reigned during a lot of the colonial expansion everything we looked so far down on people who ate other people and one of our sacraments one of our holiest things is communion which is eating the flesh and drinking the blood of Jesus. I, and it's just kind of weirding me out. Yeah, I mean, Papua New Guinea, they ate the, the family and friends, ate the family of their dead members. Uh, Aztec ate the warriors and sacrifices, and other cultures did the similar thing. Japan, they offered parts of their flesh to the parents who were dying to help save them. Europeans, they helped did that. And I guess Catholics eat fake flesh and blood to symbolize eating flesh and blood. I wonder if that's just a transfer of cultures. Like um, the Christmas tree comes from the Germanic tribes to help convert. I was going to say, I think it's German. Yeah, yeah. to help to convert the Christian, to help to convert them into Christians. So they help, they, you know, they mixed in some of their traditions with Christian traditions. And I'm wondering if that's the same thing with, communion with the blood and flesh of christ of trying to convince other cultures to join hey mike you know what you just did what did i do good you you brought it back to trees fuck uh all right i gotta i can't i can't go back i gotta go back to space how would you describe cannibalism to i'm just trying to figure out how to explain explain cannibalism to aliens and how would you explain cannibalism to, you know, NASA? If you're, like, on Mars and you had to eat a human, 
how like that's a survival situation but like i feel like it's different in space to bring it to something we were talking about before the podcast two man enter one man leave that's all you gotta say oh, cosmonaut cosmonaut versus an astronaut who's going to, who's gonna eat who that's a good question i mean that's does look uh, you, say what you will but the russians have an insane will to live and it's not uncommon for them to eat people during the battle of leningrad they had to eat some of their own to fight off the germans and fuck they were eating people and still not giving up do you know how fucking desperate you have to be <laughs> Dude, russians might be like the toughest motherfuckers yeah. on the planet they gotta be yeah they bred out all the weaknesses earlier but it Oh, there's none left. <laughs> there's no weakness in Russia. <laughs> it does make me think. You know what happens? You know what happened to the weak Mike? They got eaten. They got eaten. Yeah. That's exactly what happened. But it does make me think. So a stereotype with Russians is they drink lots of vodka. I'm wondering if you can marinate humans by basing what they eat. So if you're an alcoholic, is it bourbon flavored meat? Oh, it sounds like you're overhandling it. A little S and P. It's all you need. <laughs> Flip twice. Flip twice. Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm, like, I'm wondering if you are more prone to be in the sunlight. You know how some people's skin turn more leathery or more tan. Does that have? Again, see Florida. See Florida. <laughs> uh, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, but I, I don't know how to answer your question, Nick, of uh, the community of Christ. I gave my best answer of trying to convince other cultures, but I have no idea. You might be, you're asking the wrong person about modern religions. Yeah, I, I just think it's weird and, and, and is worth mentioning. Most definitely. Well, I think on that fun note, I want to thank everyone for listening. And one more time, Nick, where can people find us if they want to tell us more about cannibalism? You can find us on YouTube and Instagram. And that is it. And as always, thank you for listening. Thanks for listening to the Backyard Philosophy Podcast. We rarely finish a podcast without missing a point we wanted to bring up, so let us know what we forgot. And if you have a topic you want us to talk about, let us know at Backyard Philosophy on Instagram and Backyard Philosophy Podcast on Twitter.